Okay, here we go. It's part two, why every woman should date a woman. And <clears throat> I was feeling into this part two after I created the first video because I addressed one piece of dating a woman that really got emphasized. And in that video, I talk about a concept called toxic femininity, which is not something that's being talked about very much. And before I dive into any of that, I first just want to say thank you so much to everyone who watched that video and shared it. It really opened up a conversation between men and women and other identified individuals that I think is important, especially in our spiritual communities and especially around us, those types of people who are exploring consciousness. I think we also need to explore um, the way that we're using our language in, in these masculine feminine conversations. And so it's really important to, to be sharing these conversations. So thank you to everyone who shared before. And if you feel moved to share this video, please do that as well. Um, so why I think every woman, woman should date a woman part two, it's true. I dated a woman and I learned lots of different things. And in the last video, I cover one piece on toxic femininity, but in this video, I want to cover how much I my emotional spectrum and what I mean by that is I've always been a very big feeler and when I was younger I definitely tried to shut that down and hands up if you try to shut down your feeling when you were young whether you were a female or a male right you were sensitive right and there was this place where maybe it wasn't fully accepted in the family or maybe you got made fun of at school or just that one instance happened where a coach yelled at you and told you to not be so sensitive and it's like we shut down these feeling aspects of ourselves and when I dated this woman I found someone who had not shut down this part of herself there's something really powerful about the um, Maybe it's inherent. I don't know that it's inherent, but the socialized creation of a woman who really is fully expressed emotionally, and it helped me wake up more expression in my emotions and not to be ashamed when I feel something. You know, I was going through a really intense time when I was dating her, and um, I was feeling so many things, and I really tried to keep everything under control. I tried to keep my cool. I tried to. Um, stay centered but it was like trying to stay cool I wasn't fully centered in my in my truth I was trying to stay cool I was trying to stay calm I was trying to stay collected and this incredible woman had a way of just saying don't try to pretend like be who you are be that emotional self be big I mean you don't have to direct it at anyone you don't have to be angry at someone or share this bigness with anyone like you can dance it out you can scream it out you can journal it out you can make art this this woman activated art in me again and it felt so so incredible and it was really really powerful um, this woman also really brought forward some of the lies that are that are associated with gender dynamics right masculine feminine men women gender dynamics and that's really what I wanted to talk about next are are some of these really intense just like statements that I've heard women say about men that if it were the other way around or if there was an energetic the other way around where men were speaking about women this way um, it would be really not okay and I think as women especially with the Me Too movement and the women's movement moving forward I am so grateful to be a woman on the planet at this time and I'm so grateful that we as women are coming together and speaking about the inequalities and really coming forward with the truth about what it means to be a woman on this planet and at the same time I think it's really important for women to realize that this system is inherently broken and that the socio emotional complexes that women have men also have another type of complexes that have been placed on them by society and specifically uh, this piece around the masculine innocence and the heart of a young boy who just wants to explore and be curious and be loving and be in that place of play and wonder and curiosity right and how that gets shut down so early on in our culture and that goes right into the first lie and and there are three big lies that I've noticed that our spiritual community is spreading about men and the first one is that they feel less 
like that men somehow are emotionally retarded and that they don't feel as much as women and that's just not true that's just not true that women somehow feel more we're more in tune we might be more in tune because it's socially acceptable for us to be in tune and maybe we have some some magical feminine superpower maybe but I really believe that masculine and feminine are energies that are being embodied by both men and women at this time and men can be just as untapped tapped into their intuition their feminine uh, ways right the cycles and and beyond you know beyond masculine and feminine it's the surrender and the action right every single one of us has the surrender and action every single one of us has the inhale and the exhale right so also within the the man's body is this ability to be extremely intuitive within the man's mind is a, the ability to be extremely tuned in and and the first lie of, of that they somehow feel less needs to be banished it's just not true um, the second lie that I have found in our community is that they are our space holders that men are somehow our space holders like the masculine is the feminine space holder and I just want to call bullshit no we are here to hold space for each other we are here to hold space for each other hello Christopher sweet Christopher that men and women, masculine, feminine, we're here to hold space for each other. And this concept that one has to hold space for another is a perpetuation of the codependency. I think there are instances where men holding space for women and men holding space for men and women holding space for women all have different contexts that are very powerful. And women holding space for men, they all have different medicines. But the idea that my man needs to be my space holder because I'm the feminine one. It's just not true. It's a lie. Um, and then the third lie that's being spread about masculine feminine dynamics is that somehow women are the embodiment of the divine feminine. And ladies, I hate to break it to you, but you are not the divine feminine. You're not a goddess, right? We embody these aspects because they're metaphors of something that we cannot explain, of something much greater. Right? There's something much greater going on here. And if it feels good and helps get into that place of like, okay, I'm the divine feminine, I'm the goddess, that's fine. But that's not necessarily what's happening. Like spirit is neutral. Spirit is beyond anything that we could define. Feminine and masculine is really refined down into something that we can relate to as men and women on this planet. But it's not what is. Right? It's, it's us making God come closer to us than God really giving us the insight of what these energies are. The only energy that exists is love. There's no such thing as masculine and feminine energies in the divine. We as humans have designed that to help us understand energetics that we do not have language for. What is true is beyond beyond. Masculine and feminine does not exist. And I really want to challenge this third piece of any woman who thinks she's the embodiment of the divine feminine, like step up sister. No, you're not. We have aspects of something that we've identified as feminine, but that is also a spirit, a, a social construct. What is inherently feminine? What is inherently masculine? Look at cross cultures across generations. It's switched and flopped so many times. Who's role? Who's doing what? Who's killing who? Who's stronger? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? Spirit is neutral. Spirit is not here to be masculine and feminine. Spirit is here to discover self. And if these words support you in creating something that you really want to create on this planet, I, I honor that. And a lot of friends that I know, a lot of coaches that I know use the divine feminine, the divine masculine. That's fine. I'm not critiquing that use. I've used it too. But I really think it's time to honor all of that and start the conversation of the linguistics that meta that experience. There's something beyond that too. There's nothing wrong with divine masculine feminine. Keep using it. Keep playing with it. Have fun. But just know that truth is always neutral. Truth is not binary. Spirit is not binary. So when binaries exist, that means we're in the paradox, which is closer to truth. But what is actually truth is the oneness. That's all for now. I love you all. If you like this video, please share it. If you didn't, please share it. Send me a comment. 
comment down below. I would love to have deeper conversations with you about all this. I got my friends, Obsidian and Moonstone with me. A little bit of grounding, a little bit of what's up, what's up. You know what I'm saying? I've got my mood uh, LED light going on to give some rays to my babies that are growing in my house. Yes, I'm growing some plants inside my house. Um, I love you, Christopher. Please share this video and let people know that spirit is neutral. Spirit is beyond beyond. Anytime someone starts to define the divine, that's when you know that they're telling you a lie. I'll say it again. Anytime that someone starts to define the divine, you, that's when you know they're telling you a lie. I love you all. Remember, God is bigger than anything that we can think, hear, see, or even feel. We just get a little slice of that pie every moment we breathe deep into our bellies. Peace, love, light. Love you all. Boom.